Welcome back to Island Team with your faves, Kevin and Azim featuring Jade. And it is now time to jump in to eat local with our great friend, um, Dr. Sebastian. Good morning. Say it again, sorry. Oh, so welcome back <laughs> to, <laughs> to Island Tea with your face. Come on, I didn't mean you, on, but it's okay. It's not... <laughs> oh, okay. Well, <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, um, great. <laughs> Yes, good morning, Doctor. Mm. Welcome back to the to, to our program. Kevin, did you hear that? Nope. Is it me? <laughs> oh, it was me. Okay. <laughs> hey. Okay. I can I can hear. There we go. There we yes. go. There we go. As I'm hurry up, come back, please, and stop having me doing these things. <laughs> <laughs> so, question: Do I have the record for the most appearances on Island Team? Oh no, Shannon has your beat. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Shannon has your beat by miles. No, but I think <laughs> I, I think he might be second. You know, I'm second. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah, why not? You're second. I'm thinking about it, and I think I think you're probably in second place, but you're still beaten by by, by Shannon. Yeah, I don't beaten. I don't think anybody could touch Shannon's record right now. Oh wow. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, it's something I'm not going to aim for then. <laughs> yeah, it might be a good thing, it might be a bad thing, we don't know. <laughs> but we're going to figure it out, because I know people have lots of questions, so... Yeah, definitely. We'll see how many of them we can answer today. Definitely. So, Doc, how, is, how has it been going? I know we saw you, like, two weeks ago? Yeah, two weeks ago. Um, well, we've been making progress in terms of how many individuals get vaccinated every day. So, right now, we're at a steady... Um, between 150 to 200 people per day that's getting vaccinated. Hmm. Um, so that's not bad. Um, At all. You know, um, but we would have to keep up that momentum mm -hmm. to get to our goal, um, you know, the 70% or the 33,000 individuals. Um, hopefully with these education sessions that I've been doing and my other colleagues have been doing can hopefully speed up the process. Um, but again, people have a lot of fears and concerns, and you know we have to get toward answer those fears and concerns that they have, and so we can get to that goal. Well, what have what has been the, in your opinion, the biggest fear that people has had about the vaccine that you have to constantly reassure them about? Well, um, honestly, um, they're afraid that the vaccine will do something to their bodies, whether it is infertility. A lot of women ask that, mm. um, especially women who have um, had no children. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the blood clot situation, people still ask that, even though that's mostly been cleared up, that mm -hmm. it doesn't cause any blood clots. Um, people um, just generally prefer not to take any medication at all. You know, they believe in their herbs and stuff like that and taking vitamins and those type of things. Some, I guess, more natural remedies, mm -hmm. um, even though those natural remedies do not um, stop you from getting an infection and the complications afterwards. Um, but those are the main ones I've been hearing. Um, but usually after an individual takes a vaccine and they get over that first 24, 48 hour period, they're like, oh, that was it? Yeah. And they, they didn't realize that it wasn't going to be this big thing. Yeah. It's, you know, our, our imagination tends to run wild, you know, before we do something. And with the help of social yeah. media and all the wrong <laughs> things that they, they find out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Social media has been probably the biggest hurdle. <laughs> 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 I mean, so, Easily. so. Yeah, I mean, so much um, incorrect information can spread so quickly. If you look at anything, if you look at your WhatsApp, you'll probably see forwarded too many times from <laughs> from some type of post <laughs> about the vaccine or anything. And anything really, I, I tend to try to avoid those things because I know, that, okay, this is mass hysteria. That is, yeah, yeah that is something that we often talk about. Yeah. So, 
Um, I want to take a, a, a moment out to address a question that we had posed on the stream a oh. few days ago. Okay. Uh, well, last week, I think it was. Um, okay. So somebody said that they find it strange that if no one takes the vaccine, one, let me rephrase that because I said something wrong. Okay. So they said, I find it strange that even if one takes the vaccine, mm. one still has to mask up and social distance. Okay. So I want you to shed some light on why this has to happen because I, I, I think people don't understand why okay. why do I, why is it that I took this vaccine I still have to do these things is the vaccine not supposed to make me good to go so. well you're probably good to go um, you as a person because the pretty much the benchmark of all these vaccines not just AstraZeneca is to prevent severe illness hospitalization and death and that's what it is all of them do at 100% effectiveness right now, okay? Um, so you're good to go. It doesn't mean you can't have the virus. So you can have the virus and you can possibly still spread it, even though it, com it reduces the chances of spreading it by up to 90% with this one, with this vaccine, once you get your two doses, up to 90%, mm -hmm. it will reduce that. Um, but it's still a possibility that you still can. And if no one else is vaccinated or some people around you aren't vaccinated, then they can get severe illness, hospitalization or death. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason behind that. So in, once enough individuals are vaccinated, then we can relax those um, protocols and policies and stuff like that. And hopefully we get back to a sense of normalcy. So that's the reason behind that, because you won't get sick. You should not get severely ill. You should not die or be hospitalized, but it's a possibility you can still spread it. Yeah, I think that's one thing people right. Right. So what forget. You, what you're saying in summary is that it, it, it just prevents you from succumbing to the virus itself. It doesn't protect you from catching it or whatever. It, just it, it, it does protect you. you. Seriously Ill. It does protect you. Um, to a certain extent, up to 90%, right? But there's always that, that room for error. So, you know, for, for instance, let's say I, well, I work in a hospital, <laughs> so I'm more likely to get in contact with a whole bunch of, let's say, sick patients who may have COVID-19 rather than someone who works at an office who doesn't get in contact with individuals regularly, you know? So let's say I both, let's say both me and you took the vaccine. I'm in more contact with individuals. I'm more likely, I'm more likely to catch COVID-19 than you are because you're not interacting with that many people. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's basically it. So, so many different factors come into play. So exposure would come into play and those type of things. But the, the thing is it reduces the likelihood of you catching it and mm -hmm. it, and it also reduces the likelihood of you passing it on which is extremely important if the virus can't be passed on properly it doesn't have any host to jump to or live it doesn't have a chance to mutate because one the vaccine is always battling the virus through your immune through your okay well um doctor it seems like we have someone that wants to ask you a question caller good morning you're live Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The vaccine that is being distributed in St. Kitts and Nevis yes. is given in two doses. Yes, it is. Uh, the, is the chemical composition of each dose identical? Yes, it is. It's the same exact um, vaccine. Um, so the reason why it's given in two doses is because it gives your body a chance to look at this um the COVID-19 proteins that the vaccine has to build an immune response. So for instance, if it gives your body a chance to study it twice, so it builds up a better defense. That's basically why we have two doses, but it's the same thing. Um, it just gives your body a second chance to look at it, so your body can build a stronger immune response for the second time, so we can reach to the 90%. No, does that mean that the Johnson and Johnson single dose vaccine mm -hmm. is in a sense disadvantage that the body does not get a chance to test it. Um, well, it 
does have a lower um, effectiveness because it only, I believe it only reaches around to 80 something percent um, with a single dose. Um, so it does have a lower effectiveness, but at the same time, the, the benchmark for all these vaccines are to prevent severe illness, to prevent hospitalizations and death, and the Johnson & Johnson does that as well, um, even with its single dose. Um, so they all meet the criteria of what these vaccines should do. Can you explain in every person's language the difference between efficacy mm -hmm. and efficiency? Efficacy and effectiveness? And effectiveness, pardon me, yes. Okay, so um, efficacy is basically a number that they get um, through clinical trials, usually a percentage, okay? So when they're testing it out in, in, in the research and the study and stages, so usually, um, if you have, let's say, a group of 100 people, you divide it into half, you give the uh, one half the vaccine and you give the other half nothing. You send them out into the world and then well, some time passes and then you test them to see if they have COVID-19. So depending on the, the, per the percentage of the individuals who get COVID-19 who are vaccinated, that's how the efficacy is determined. So let's say out of those 50, um, five, five of them who got the vaccine, out of the 50, five of them got COVID-19, all right? That, that would give you a percentage of 90%. That's the efficacy. So it's a 90% efficacy. So 45 out of the, the, the 50 didn't get COVID-19. So it, it gives roughly 90%, right? That's how you determine efficacy. But the problem with efficacy is um, there's so many different factors affecting it. Because like I mentioned earlier in the program, exposure has a lot to do with it. We don't know how exposed each and every individual is. Um, we don't know how strong their immune systems are. Um, we don't know what underlying illnesses that these individuals may have that may not have been picked up beforehand. Um, their age determines the fact, a factor, um, whether they social distance, whether, whether they hand sanitize, whether they go to uh, mass gatherings or not. So that, that doesn't play, the eff efficacy doesn't play a factor in it. And so for instance, the Pfizer and Moderna tested their vaccine during the lowest point, one of the lowest points of the pandemic where there were low numbers of cases. So and that's how the efficacy was so high because there's less people to infect other people. Um, so many scientists speculate that if they tested it during the height of the pandemic, then their efficacy would probably be much different, um, much more similar to like the Johnson & Johnson and the AstraZeneca because there were just more people to spread it around now than it was then when they tested it. I hope that explains the efficacy for you. Um, regarding effectiveness. So effectiveness is what we see in the real world. Um, so the effectiveness has to do with how does it actually work in reality? Um, uh, are we getting um, decreased positive cases? Are we getting less hospitalizations due to COVID-19? Are we seeing decrease complications of COVID-19, even if you did catch it with the vaccine. So that's the effectiveness of the vaccine, in short, how it's actually doing in real life. And so far, it showed that it's 100% effective in preventing severe COVID-19 um, disease, hospitalization, and death. And that's where, that's the point that was, we, we've gotten to. So effectiveness has to do with real life, Efficacy has to do with a clinical trial where we don't really understand all the, or have control over all these factors. For the first time, I have clearly understood the difference between these two terms. Thank you very much. Okay, no problem. Well, yay. I'm happy that somebody understood now and hopefully more people did as well because 
I don't know. I feel like the more you try to explain, the, the less people listen. They're just stuck in the ways with some of these things. Mm. And I, I could imagine it must be frustrating trying to get people to understand that, yes, mm. um, we don't have any high cases, we don't have any community spreads and yeah. all of that, but this is why this is important as well. Yeah, I mean, I guess it, it can be frustrating sometimes, but at the same time, everyone learns in their own way, in mm -hmm. their own kind of manner. And it, it's kind of like if you're trying to educate someone in, in a certain, um, about a certain topic, mm -hmm. um, I think the best teachers or anyone, they can adapt to how this person learns best. Mm -hmm. So I try, I try my very best to understand how they learn or how they take in information, and I try to adapt it towards that. Um, so we're speaking to friends of mine all the time about yep. the vaccine and them taking it and all of that. They often, um, they often bring up the fact that it feels like because the um, procedures in place work so well that they don't have a worry yeah <laughs> i mean it, it works very well um yeah. but those procedures in place um they're they're not sustainable mm -hmm. you know um it's almost like we're it's like a i, I hate to use this word a ticking time bomb mm -hmm. where everything will come crashing down eventually um if we continue mm -hmm. at that path um well okay um we have another call caller good morning you're live what's up uh, good morning. Hi, good morning. Um, I just like to ask the doctor: uh, uh, Do we expect the when we, when the second dose is taken mm -hmm. that the reactions would be the same, or would it be because the, it has been primed already? We can expect a more or less severe reaction. Okay. And and mm -hmm. why would um, people have different reactions in the first place if if the vaccine is supposed to stimulate a immune, immune response, response. Mm -hmm. yeah why would that be and the final question um how how would we know how long the immunity would last okay. um is, is 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 there a way of detecting that or we just have to wait and see okay um those are the questions right Okay, so the first question is, would we have a more severe reaction with the second dose? Why do we have a reaction at all? Um, so why do we have a reaction at all is basically the side effects, which would be fever, chills, body pain, etc. Um, some people may get nausea, some people may get vomiting, chills. Um, that's actually your body building an immune response. So your body builds an immune response to counteract any foreign entity so the vaccine is basically showing your body COVID-19 proteins not the actual virus itself but the proteins and your body builds an immune response so then you, your body will raise its temperature in response to that because it thinks it's battling COVID-19 right it'll raise its temperature because we know heat kills germs so that's what your body is doing and your body is working in overdrive, that's how you'll get the body pains and stuff like that. The chills you feel is just a response of you having a temperature um, and your body working in overdrive. So that's where you get the side effects. And because it's an, uh, and it's, uh, I guess, a, a whole body response, that's why you get these um, body pains, the nausea and vomiting. So it can affect any system really, but those are the, the very common side effects. Um, but it just means that your body's immune response is working, right? Um, so why do people get different side effects? That, that's a very complicated question to answer. Um, it it kind of works like this. If you have a household and let's say everyone got the flu in the household, usually some people are a little more sick than others. Some people just have a little sniffle and then they can go to work and they're fine. Um, some people are knocked out for a week or two um it really just depends on the person and mm -hmm. it, it actually depends on on how how exposed they are to it and how their immune system reacts so some people may have a very um active immune response compared to others you know mm -hmm. it, it just it's just an individually individualistic based um response 
So it's very hard to answer that specifically, but different people just have different reactions. And then there's the last question. I'm sorry, can you remember of it? Um, oh, he was asking how long... Oh, the immunity yeah. lasts. So, I mean, so far mm -hmm. since last year, the immune response has been there. Um, from since they've been giving people this the immune response has been there. Um, um, we can test for the different antibody levels um, that the vaccine produces, that your, well, your body produces from the vaccine, mm -hmm. and to see if the levels are adequate enough to protect you. Um, so far, that has been there. But as to long, how long in the future is going to last, we're not sure because we have to see how long these levels actually stay there. Yeah. Um, it's hopefully we don't have to. Um, <laughs> I know it in an ideal world. In an ideal world, we don't have to. It, it would be great. Uh -huh. um, but we don't want to take that chance. So that's why everyone's trying to get that, to that 70 percent that herd immunity so we can eradicate the virus. You know, like I previously mentioned, if there's no host mm -hmm. or any um, livable environment for the coronavirus to live in, which is us humans, mm -hmm. then it can't replicate, it can't mutate, it can't survive yeah. because the numbers are too low. Mm -hmm. I always use this um, example, let's say if you had a, th a town of a thousand people and 950 people die and there's only 50 people left, those 50 people can't run the town. Mm -hmm. That town's going to die out. Mm -hmm. And that's the same way the vaccine's doing, that's what the vaccine is doing to the virus, is putting it in such a low state. It can't replicate, it can't um, thrive. So it's eventually going to die out. Mm -hmm. So even though you can catch it, that's what herd immunity does. It puts it at such a low level, it cannot thrive mm -hmm. and it can't survive. Mm -hmm. I hope that an answers your questions, Carla. I'm sorry. I hope so as well. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you were saying something? No, um, I, I'm, I'm just glad that, you know, we're getting a chance to, to get these questions um, answered by somebody that can answer them. Um, so if anybody has any questions on the live streams, feel free to put them there. I'll, of course, read them out for you. Mm -hmm. um, um, we don't have any question, other questions coming in yet from the live streams. Well, okay. we were talking about having to battle with the fact that the protocols worked so well that now people don't, <laughs> they don't see the need to, to be vaccinated. Well, you ever heard of um, the saying, um, yeah, the reward for um, good work is more work or something like that? Yeah, I think that's, yeah, I think yeah, I heard that so one. So I, I think that <laughs> this perfectly fits, fits in, you know, we did a really good job at uh -huh. um, keeping coronavirus out of the community here. And, and I think that may have you know yeah, worked against <laughs> us in in some ways we did a yeah. great job so let's yeah. let's do one so we're, we're going to try to do another good job in educating people to take this vaccine hopefully yeah because uh, i feel like that's one of the biggest things that people always say oh well we don't have any cases and we have to quarantine and mm -hmm. all these things so why do we need to take this vaccine i mean we, we can't quarantine forever you know. Yeah, I don't think people are. Yeah, that we side can't. Of it. We, we can't live in the bubble forever. We can't live in the so bubble forever. It's perfect bubbles since the beginning of this pandemic, and at, at some point, it's going. I mean, we we have seen the side effects of the bubble. Yeah. You know, the the economy has sort of shut down. We have like no outside um, stimulation coming in. Mm -hmm. So at some point, the bubble is going to have to be popped for it, for things to continue. I mean, so and the, a country of our size, we. Uh, we it's very unlikely we can be self-sustainable mm -hmm. very unlikely um and i know there's a lot to talk about agriculture and stuff like that and doing certain things but um i don't think that it would necessarily be sustainable at our size and mm -hmm. plus mm -hmm. the capital you would have to put invest in for all these projects to go off the ground where is that going to come from if we have nothing coming in? Um, but that's not my feel. I'm just going to speak to the medical. <laughs> that's just my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there, there's also this, this side where people forget that the vaccinations also expire if you don't use them after a certain time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no, that's, that's going to be a challenge. Um, but I think we will meet that goal, at least for this batch. 
Um, oh, nice. Based on, well, based on how many people are getting vaccinated per day, if that mm -hmm. continues, we should be fine. Um, the the real challenge would be the the next set that comes in. Well, I mean, if you take if you take one dose, you should probably follow up and I hope oh no no everyone who has gotten one dose has their vaccine waiting for them oh already. okay I see what you mean I see what yeah you mean. they already have their vaccine I'm mm -hmm. talking about the next batch of 20,000 plus to get yeah to, that's what I'm I'm mostly concerned about mm -hmm. um, but I think we've been doing a, a good job and we've so far I mean during this pandemic since last year we've gotten over every hurdle that's been thrown our way that's good you know, so mm -hmm. we have a good track record of success. So hopefully we, we can get there again. Okay. okay, we have another call. Okay. Caller, good morning. Okay. You're live. It is being stressed that we have been successful in preventing community spread yes. of COVID-19 within St. Kitts and Nevis. Mm -hmm. Does this mean in a perverse way that our success at limiting this spread means that we have failed in our efforts to make the populace aware of how dangerous COVID-19 is. Um, uh, uh, last connection? Okay. Well, I don't think exposing, um, necessarily expose, even though we were successful, um, necessarily exposing the population to COVID-19 would have been the best route to go because of such a, we have such a small population, once someone gets sick and it starts to spread through the community, it's going to really damage the entire island. Um, we would be debilitated, in, for lack of uh, better words. Um, because for instance, if I work, I work in the, the hospital, if five doctors are out in the hospital, we are short-staffed, we are on our heads. And I don't think St. Kitts can handle community spread because of our population size. Um, mm -hmm. I think I think we would be in serious trouble. So even even though um, if we did have community spread, I think people would be more aware and would take it a little bit more seriously of how dangerous it can be. I don't think that would have been the way to go or to call it a failure. Um, I think our best bet is to just try to keep educating people or or at least I'm sure people know of individuals overseas who have had come into contact with COVID-19 I know of tons of individuals yeah myself. I have friends that had COVID and, and it's not it's not yeah. a, it's not a good feeling maybe people don't know of people um, that personally but they would know someone who knows someone at least um, and their lives have literally changed because they've had it. Even though they've recovered, they are facing um, disability. They they're tired. They can't work because of it. So these problems are real. So I wouldn't call it a failure. Um, yeah. I I I think um, preserving life is um, the most important thing. So prevention. Um, so we have some comments coming in on the live. Uh, we have a few of them. So okay. I'll just ask them as we go along. So okay. the first one is, um, what happens if you don't take the second dose and you've already taken the first? What happens? Is there some sort of, what, what exactly happens? Okay, so you're not as protected um, if you only take the first dose. So it, it, it drops um, all the way down to 60 something percent. Um, so that that's what happens and we don't know if you take one dose if that immunity lasts this long as we've seen it last with the two doses so i would recommend you definitely take the second dose because we have no idea how long that protection even and the lower the lower protection would last without the second dose because the second dose gives your body a second look to to, to i guess fortify it fortify the immunity Okay. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so another question is, someone is asking, what about persons who are breastfeeding or pregnant? Um, those persons cannot take the vaccine. Okay. Is there anything being done to ensure that they are protected as well? And if so, what are those things being put in place? Okay, um, just to quickly answer that, um, studies are coming out showing that people who are pregnant and breastfeeding can take, the, 
can take vaccines, but um, I don't think we have made that um, a, a rule here in St. Kitts just as yet. We're waiting for more information about that to come out because originally the studies, when they did it, they never included pregnant people or lactating women. Um, so that's the reason. Um, so individuals who are pregnant and breastfeeding, that's what herd immunity is there for, for individuals that can't take the vaccine. Okay, so the, the people who are maybe too sick or have allergies or in this person's, or in the person's case who is breastfeeding or, or is pregnant can't take the vaccine. But they would be able to take the vaccine once they've finished breastfeeding um, or they're not pregnant anymore. Okay, Kevin, we um, have a... And then the last one. Oh, we had oh, a... we have a call? Okay, yeah. let's take the call before we oh. jump into the next okay, one. Okay, go ahead. The, oh, the call uh, disconnected, yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. the next person is saying, one of the fears is the speed in which the vaccine became available as compared to previous vaccines. Okay. He, uh, the person is asking if you can address the science behind why this vaccine is produced so quickly. Okay. Um, so there's a few reasons. One... Um, it's called, the real name of COVID-19 is SARS-CoV-2. So if you've heard about SARS before, the original one, it's very, very similar um, to this um, COVID-19 virus. So we had a lot of data on, on it because of there's so much similarities. So creating a vaccine from that data, because they were trying to do, for, they were trying to do it for SARS and another version of it called MERS. Um, and so we already had the data, so putting that data to use and creating the vaccine, that made it a lot faster, it made it a lot easier. Secondly, researchers then have to go out and look for money to conduct their research because the whole world was already up in arms and the whole world was ready to spend money to get this pandemic over, you know. So that's another factor. So the, the finances were in place and we already had a head start on the data because we already were, were looking at SARS. Um, third, thirdly, um, the administrative process of getting vaccines out were sped up. So they still did all the same research. They went through all the phases of the trials. They didn't skip a step. But the administrative process of like, um, signing off on, okay, this is okay to use. It didn't stay on a desk for months or anything like that. It was, um, of, it, it required emergency attention. So that's why everything got moved through the, the pipeline really fast. So that's basically why this vaccine got to, um quicker than the rest. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it did for sure for me at, at least. Um, we have a call, caller, good morning. Ah uh, yes, good morning again, uh, Doctor. Where are we with the testing? Um, because is, I, I know we're all about vaccinating now, yeah. but wouldn't fast, effective testing that can show even if persons are asymptomatic, wouldn't that be just as useful as vaccinations in in, in preventing community spread and isolating people who have it? People will be able to come in, test, get tested. If they not, if they have the, if they have the virus, they can isolate, be isolated and attended to. And the others, the other people who test negative, just go about their business. So, so where are we, where are we now with the, the, the testing phase? Okay. okay? And and the developing the tests that can, that are better, better tests. Okay. Um. So. The testing phase, anyone that comes into St. Kitts gets quarantined and they're being tested at least two to three times during quarantine and 72 hours before they even come onto the plane. If they get a positive result through that 72 hours before they come on the plane, they can't come to St. Kitts. And the reason why that we, we have that timeline of um, testing for the two weeks is because sometimes the viral count may not be high enough in your body for the test to show positive, right? So currently we use our, uh, what we call a RT-PCR test. So basically what that test does is if there's enough virus from the swab that they take, 
it basically you put it in a I guess an incubator or, or some type of machinery and the machine what it does is it multiplies that virus so mm -hmm. it lets the virus thrive so it, then that's how you know it's a positive result mm -hmm. because it puts it that swab in the environment if there's a virus there it will multiply and stuff like mm -hmm. that i'm trying to put it as the simplest way possible mm -hmm. um and that's how we know if it's a positive um, test um where are we at better tests um so currently the, the pcr is one of the most um I guess effective test because it actually tells you if there is a virus there because you have to it, the virus can't multiply or grow mm -hmm. if there's no actual virus when you take the swab that's that's what the PCR does so right now that's the gold standard test um, there are other tests like antibody tests and stuff mm -hmm. like that which are quicker right but it doesn't tell you whether or not the virus is actually there it might mm -hmm. tell you that you've gotten exposed Mm -hmm. to the virus and you might have already passed it so those tests are just it wouldn't it wouldn't really serve a purpose for here mm -hmm. so that's 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 why with our quarantine or with our quar quarantine and preventing community spread because we wouldn't know if the person actually has the virus or if they were just exposed to the virus mm, okay and have, have already passed it mm -hmm. come on you had another question Yes, someone is saying, um, someone is saying, just get, put in a comment that said, it's really sad that people like Cuthbert are doing so much to encourage, but these efforts are being manipulated by some media companies in the country where everyone is crying for normalcy with every negative article that pops up. He's doing a great job, but those who claim to love this country and have great persuasive power have done other things, have done nothing to assist his efforts um one other person i think i'll read azim's comment in, if we have a call we have no you could go ahead okay um so azim just wanted to say that he's very thankful for the forum like this that answers people's concerns with facts and grace as opposed to other approaches that attempt to shame and coerce people into compliance so thank you very much for coming on on our show to to, to answer the hard questions um yeah. they're not really hard but the questions that people seem to not want to answer um, um yeah, yeah because thank you, thank and, you for and not, me. And anytime and not only that like i feel like there's ways for you to get people to to do what you think is right but mm. bullying and um shaming them isn't it for some reason we we're starting to see this culture of you being shamed if you're not vaccinated or bullied yeah. and i don't think that will help at all yeah well um negative reinforcement doesn't work um that's that's been proven scientifically mm -hmm. you know positive reinforcement works um that that's the direction i believe that you should always go in negative reinforcement doesn't work it just creates fear it might work a little bit mm -hmm. but it doesn't work effectively yeah it does create um, fear it creates fear and it it creates a little bit of distrust and it gets people angry mm -hmm. um because instead people instead of people seeing the, the benefits they're going to be like oh so we're all trying to encourage us to get vaccinated there must be some conspiracy and we mm -hmm. already know with facebook and whatsapp <sighs> yeah the, it's, the, it's, social yeah. media is already is already a, a forum where a lot of um things can be taken as negative even mm -hmm. though it might be coming from a positive place it mm -hmm. can be taken as negative because um people react to things differently mm -hmm. okay and they'll take it as negative and then we may have like a bigger problem on our hands if too many people take it as negative so. yeah and that's the only part they share they don't they i i i seldom find myself receiving videos or pictures or whatever messages about you know the positives and the benefits and it's always oh see this this conspiracy here this company trying to make money here the mm -hmm. government trying to do this so it's 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 a lot so it's very hard to weed out yeah the good things and i feel like the positives get drowned out a lot because of these yeah. reactions that we often have yeah yeah um we need to focus more on the positives you know yeah. some days i actually say i'm not going to listen to any 
any negative comments mm -hmm. or any negative even even music mm -hmm. anything that's negative if it's heartbreak music i'm not going to listen to that <laughs> uh -huh. only positive uplifting music and i find that my day is a lot better i'm more i'm more lively i'm happier so yeah. once you surround yourself with positivity it actually works you know and you drown out anything that could be um conceived as preconceived as negative and i agree completely but what i want you to do is tell the people again mm -hmm. um, the after effects of COVID because again for some reason we're still stuck on the oh the survival rate is this and nothing can really happen to you and you know well the, su the survival rate um, they're right about that the survival mm -hmm. rate is is pretty high but what are you surviving to what's your, what's your livelihood after um, some people may not have those complications but a lot of people do um, the chronic body pains, the blood clots to lungs, the psychological effects, the depression. A doctor recently who had COVID-19 committed suicide because he was so depressed afterwards um, because of how it was affecting your body. The scarring on your lungs. So even if you recover, there's, there's scar tissue on your lungs because of it. Because any type of serious inflammation or damage to your lungs can cause scarring, and that's what COVID-19 did mm -hmm. or does. Um, it affects your heart. I know someone personally that young um, in their 20s who now has um, the heart of a 65-year-old and in their, in their 20s, and they've had oh. no medical condition before. Mm -hmm and they caught COVID-19 and they haven't been able to work because of that. And they're a doctor, they're, they're not here, um, but because of that, they're unable to work. Um, so if you can see the, the damage that it can do to a, a person's life like that, mm -hmm. their outlook on life must be completely different. You're young, you're in your 20s, mm -hmm. you're, you're starting your career and your outlook on life is, oh, I'm tired all the time. Mm -hmm. My body hurts. I have a heart of a 65-year-old. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of life is that? So that, that, those are the, the type of things you have to weigh yeah. when you're thinking of taking the vaccine or getting COVID-19 because those kind of complications aren't reversible. Mm -hmm. The damage in your lungs, that's, that's not reversible. You know, the psychological effects... You can get therapy, but they'll always yeah. be there. Because yeah. I remember one of my friends um, who did catch COVID. He was he wasn't he he was asymptomatic, I think, but mm -hmm. he was battling so badly with the the psychological. Because every day he would see some article about somebody dying or mm -hmm. the damage that COVID can cause. And even though he's asymptomatic, it's like he's waiting for himself to get sick and it could play on your mm. psyche daily yeah and uh, that's not that's that's something yeah. that you don't want because no. if, if it was so bad for us just to be in lockdown how how that affected us mentally mm -hmm. imagine no getting a disease that you don't know what can happen to exactly you. you've all all you've been seeing is oh you can die from this or this can happen to you or look how it's shutting down these countries and and then you happen to catch it that that like how can you function normally every day oh, it's a horrible feeling no one wants yeah. to live in continuous worry worrying whether or not i'm going to live or die how is yeah. it going to affect my my life going forward etc no one wants to live like that that's that's one of the worst feelings to have yeah it's boy i i i don't even want to <laughs> think about even the possibility of getting exposed like because i actually was well, not really. One of my, my friends who who live here did catch it and we were mm -hmm. um together like before the announcement. Not not right okay. before, but mm -hmm. so as soon as I heard it I was You were uh, you're mortified, right? Yeah, because I'm already <laughs> thinking like what if I I, what if I do it? have it and then I spread it to my family or to my coworkers or to my you know, my son is a, a toddler and mm -hmm. there were exactly. so many things that so many things that ran through your mind. Yeah. And it's gonna, and it will probably keep running through your mind until you know 
for sure that you are safe, mm -hmm. etc. But going yeah. through that stressful period. I was just waiting for the call to be like, um, so <laughs> <laughs> you're on this list and you need to go quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> thankfully, it never came. And thankfully, my friend um, got over it. But yeah. oh boy. Yeah, no, it's it's not a good feeling. Mm -mm. Stress kills. <laughs> it does, and that's another thing that we forget. Stress kills. Uh, we, it really does. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I I I I I don't. I think. Um. I guess a question I have for you is mm -hmm. most of the misinformation we receive. Sorry, is Kevin. Before you ask this question, please. let's just take this last call. Okay. Mm -hmm, sure. Carla, good morning. You're live. Hello, Carla. Good morning. You're live. Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. That may or may not know the, the, the answer, but why was there such a dramatic fall off in the, especially in the United States, in the amount of um, cases? Um, just over a, a, a short period of time. It was almost um, as if, as soon as uh, the, the past President Donald Trump um, left office, there was this dramatic drop. It, okay. it, 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 it was like falling off of a cliff. Okay. Um, so there, there, there's a, a few plausible explanations to that. Like one, um, during the election time, there were huge rallies, congregations. Um, there was the whole um, the Black Lives Matter movement where thousands upon thousands of people were gathering, and there were huge spikes. But once all of that kind of eased off mm -hmm. that would kind of um, decrease the amount of positive cases showing up and two um, America has been doing a very good job in vaccinating its population it's 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 one of the leading countries in the world that's doing a very good job in the rollout and the vaccination so the countries that are being vaccinated very well they're seeing the effects of that already. Um, I'm not sure what their percentage is currently, but I know um, a few weeks ago, they were at like 15 to 20% down on hospitalizations in certain areas that are highly vaccinated. Some states aren't um, because ev everyone, every state is fighting for their supply of vaccinations. But um, those could be some of the plausible reasons as to why. Um, and plus, um, um, that last administration was promoting a lot of um, unsafe practices in terms of um, social distancing, mask wearing, and then we have the anti-vaxxers there and the, the anti-maskers where <laughs> they would, boy. where they would, they literally would go to I believe it was it was Congress or the Senate or mm -hmm. something like that and and they would say I have the right not to wear a mask it is against whatever <laughs> blah 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 um, so these type of things caused an issue um, but now we're seeing it improve the vaccinations are in getting into people's arms there and the effectiveness of the vaccines are being shown the real life effectiveness mm -hmm. so i hope that answers your question kevin you, you had a question right um yeah i i yeah i get what the caller was saying um but then we you know we also have to take into account that the there was a lot of media sensationalism happening too um so mm -hmm. there's also that um but the question i was going to ask is for the people who receive a lot of lots of information on whatsapp and Facebook, which seem to be the primary places to get misinformation. Mm -hmm. um, how can persons who are not, you know, tech savvy or research savvy, dispel things, some of the things that they, they, they might come across? Like, what should they do if they have a forwarded message? What would you suggest they do? Um, so, we're, we're trying to decipher the information. So, when at least whenever I'm trying to decipher any information, so. Um, I try not to read into much of the WhatsApp and Facebook stuff, but occasionally I'll take a look at it because I need to know um, what are people reading into. And I'd look at it. I'd say, okay, where is the source of this information coming from? So whether it is 
this information is coming from a legitimate source, maybe it's a source from the World Health Organization, then I would take a, a more serious look at it and I'll go to the actual website of the World Health Organization and I'll back check this source mm -hmm. to see if there's actually some truth into it. Some people send articles, but some people tend to only read the headline. We spoke about that yes yesterday? We spoke about that recently, how people just mm -hmm. read yep. the headlines of things and stop. <laughs> and stop. And the problem is with a headline. The headline is supposed to grab your attention. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, what, that's, that's what the headline is. It's, mm -hmm. it's supposed to grab the reader's attention just to take a look at it. If, but when you read into the context of many things, usually it's a lot of fluff mm -hmm. and it doesn't really say much or and it doesn't say anything that is necessarily a fact, especially about... Um, um, mis uh, misinformation mm -hmm. about, let's say, the vaccine. It's so usually a lot to fluff around it, and if you actually read into detail about it, they, they have no solid ground to stand on, for the most case. If I do find, okay, this is something I should look into, I will go into, fur I'll go into the research papers about mm -hmm. this, what have they found, etc. Then I'll do my own research, because everything Everything right now is so progressive right now and mm -hmm. it's evolving and I have to stay on top of everything every day. So I hope that answers your question, Kevin. My fear with mm -hmm. people yeah, doing their my fear with people doing their own research is that you can find facts to back up your theories all the time. Well not facts, but you could right. find some, some information. To, to back back up the theory, but and it could be the wrong theory and then you go you go down this whole this rabbit hole of mm -hmm. You know, yeah. conspiracies. I mean, if you search hard enough, you can find something or someone mm -hmm. that believes in the same thing you do. Yeah. But then the thing is, whatever you believe in, has it been tested? Has it been proven without a doubt? Mm -hmm. um, so far... They don't usually go into that path. They just... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 you have to. Other, mm -hmm. Otherwise, there, there's... Then you, you can't say that's a fact. You can't say... I mean, science itself, nothing is necessarily a fact. Mm -hmm. But it's been continuously tested and tested and proven and proven and proven to be safe or mm -hmm. effective. And that's how science works. Mm -hmm. That's how it, it works for, for anything in science. Not just vaccines, anything. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, that's the route you should go down. But lots yeah. of people don't have the oh, time to no. go down that route, <laughs> you know. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep questioning something until I'm comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Last year, I was questioning all of these vaccines until the research showed and it made me comfortable with them because they were tested rigorously and mm -hmm. rigorously and the results showed this. Mm -hmm. That's why I feel comfortable. Um, so that's the best way for it, even though it's time consuming, not many people do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But for people who may not have the time, like where could they find legit information, helpful information, information that would answer the hard questions that they may have, just in case they miss this show for some reason or miss mm -hmm. all of the other <laughs> um, <laughs> things that have been happening <laughs> to educate people, where can they actually find legit information? Um, I would go to the World Health Organization. Um, I, I keep saying them just because I know they are a body that doesn't really have any bias. Mm -hmm. They're not for... A comp they're not for a company, they're not for a, a certain country, they're mm -hmm. not for this and that. So whenever you represent a company, whenever you represent a country, you have an inherent bias. Mm -hmm. No matter what you say, you, you'll have an inherent bias because that's where you're from, that's who you represent, so you'll always have a bias. The World Health Organization only represents health, and I think health is all that we should be focusing on right now. Mm -hmm. So that's why I would I always mention them. I, I think they're they're a really good legitimate source. Yes, they're um, the CDC and stuff like that, but that's an American-based um, mm -hmm. organization. So even though they represent health, they also represent America in a mm -hmm. way, and their decisions and how they do things. So they're based on the best, um, what's best for America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. You know. Well, Doctor Ken, before we leave, because we, we've run out of time, um, can you just tell people where they can go to get their vaccines if they have not gotten them as yet? Okay, um, so you can go to any one of the health centers um, on island and, and in Nevis um, to get your vaccines. They usually start at about one. You can either call in before to your 
respective health center are called 311 mm -hmm. and you can go get the vaccine or um, I know some people who just go and show up and mm -hmm. there's vaccines available for them and they can just go in and just get the vaccine. Okay. All okay. Right. Good, good stuff. I hope everybody listens to this and digest this information we will also clip this out and spread it across our social media so you could share the mini clips to your friends and your family and you know this information may help somebody that has questions still um kevon tuesday is finished just like that yeah thank god <laughs> oh geez yeah um <laughs> it is hump day tomorrow. I can't do it as good as Azim. Azim, Azim has his hump day thing going on. He's very <laughs> excited for Wednesdays, um, which I am too, because that means that it's halfway through the week. Yeah. Hope for Cutie, do you get... Um, oh, I called you Cutie, Anya. <laughs> that is his nickname, people. Um, <laughs> doctor, do you get? Do you have any weekends? I know that you, you're such a busy person. That Do you, do you get breaks? Um, I get um, about two days a week. What? That's a lot. <laughs> um, roughly two and a half. One and a half, sorry. Oh. Um, well, being an Avenger for Think It is, is a full-time job. and so. Oh, that, that was excluding the vaccination stuff. I don't get any breaks right now. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> as, as I said, an Avenger's job is never done. And right now, you're part of the Think It's Avengers when it comes to health. So, people, y'all stressing out the doctors here. <laughs> the quicker y'all get this over with, the quicker they can get right. some rest. I know they just, need some just rest. Just do what you need to do now. Like, <laughs> you know what you're supposed to do, just do it. Everybody needs to, to take a break. Like, yeah. Including the doc you. Just do what you need to do. The doctors and the nurses and the frontline workers and the NUC haven't taken a break since how long now? Last year. Oh, yeah. Last year. February. Yeah. So it's, it's basically a year and a month since you've taken a break. Yeah. from yeah it's, hmm. it's tiring but you know yeah you well no it. i don't know because i don't know oh. but you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah you gotta do it right yeah you do this is this is a part of your job and you're doing it well so we appreciate you coming here and continuously giving the information and answering questions mm -hmm. it's really appreciated well, thank you guys for having me again you know i'm shannon i'm on your i'm on your tail yes yes <laughs> you're chasing that that I'm chasing the record yeah coming for the record mm -hmm. <laughs> but kevon as usual before we go we have to hear some words from our um former fave still a fave but you know from our former from our former captain confusion yes <laughs> Please drive safely and do right by others. Please use our roundabouts correctly. <laughs> Meaning, don't overtake in our roundabouts. Don't switch lanes in our roundabouts. And when you're exiting, please indicate so that folks driving behind you can know what your intentions are. It will reduce accidents and almost accidents by significant proportions. Stay in your lane, people. Stay in your lane figuratively and, and literally. literally. Mm. Also, please let us remember to park our vehicles in a manner which is conducive to the collection of garbage from our friends at Solid Waste. If you park your cars irresponsibly, then people can collect, get their garbage, sorry, collected with the trucks. Clean. So gentlemen, when you're thiefing a piece, please park around the corner right. so the truck can get up the street <laughs> or where your madam lives to collect her trash. Indeed. It might work out better for you too. Indeed. It's going to be a clean environment when you get there mm -hmm. the next time. Mm -hmm. Also, let us please you know, put pressure on our lawmakers and our policy makers and our policy designers and wheelers and dealers in Parliament to take a look at our outdated laws, all of them, the traffic laws, the sexual assault laws, the, hmm. the, 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 the everything um, as it relates to, so that they can relate to current day life and current day society here in Singers and Navies. Update them so it, it's a reflection of what's actually happening and not what used to happen in the 1960s. Hmm. And with that, I will turn it over to our Master of Ceremonies, His Excellency Honorable Kevin Hanley. Mr. Ellsworth, you know this is your time to shine. <laughs> yes, it is, it is. And remember that you can't be everybody's cup of tea because you is not a mug. See you tomorrow. Bye, guys. All right, later, everyone. <laughs>